Hi, I'm making this video because I bought this camera, which is pretty cool, but it took me all day to set up. So hopefully this relatively short 15 minute video or so will convey all this crazy information that I didn't know about and you can benefit from my bumbling through all the mess of tutorials and research that I had to do to make this camera module work. And Autofruit has tutorials on it, but um, I thought they were lacking in clarity. And I ended up finding this video, this tutorial on Andrew's blog called Raspberry Pi Zero Programming Over USB. It's very straightforward, although it still had a couple hiccups where Andrew is a little bit too smart and he forgets what it's like to be relatively new to the Raspberry Pi scene. And Raspberry Pi Zero doesn't have any sort of keyboard or mouse or monitor and it's um, a little bit harder to get started on when you're a, a newbie like me. So anyway, I'm not that noobish, but anyway. <laughs> Following his directions, he says to download Raspbian Jesse Full, which you can do. You can just search for Raspbian Download, and you can find it from the Raspberry Pi website. Um, I have not experimented with Raspbian Jesse Lite, but you can download the zip file of Raspbian Jesse with Pixel, which is the full version. And after you do that, you want to flash it onto an SD card. What does that mean? It took me a long time to figure out what that meant. Actually, I knew what that meant. My problem was that, now, I'm on my micro SD card. My problem was that the adapter that I was using, so it's a SanDisk SD card adapter, it was in the locked position when I first put it in, and I was unable to format it using disk utility so I spent hours looking up different formatting techniques of how to format these micro SD cards. And I was running into a brick wall and I couldn't figure out why it was not working. So I'm going to eject it and put it into that locked position. So there's a little toggle switch on the side of the adapter, which goes from locked to unlocked. I'll show you what it looks like when it's locked. open up any file. It says locked up here. And so you try to make a change. Oh, can't do it, it's locked. You gotta duplicate it. So I tried to duplicate it. Nothing worked. Um, unlock. Nope, oh, read only, can't do it. So you can't change files, you can't format, and nothing seemed to work. I did not see the toggle switch. Eventually I did a bunch of research and found on one random forum somewhere that there's the toggle switch on the side of the adapter that allows you to toggle it back to the unlocked position, which allows you to read and write. And now it doesn't say locked. You can make any change and it'll allow us to save don't want to save. So I'm going to revert back to how it was. Now we can use the disk utility like normal. Um, erase, you know, save it as MS DOS format. <clears throat> so you could use it on Windows or Mac. Uh, you could do that. I like to use SD formatter. Same idea. I like it more, it's a little easier. Going through this tutorial, continuing on, we want to add a line to the bottom of the config.txt file. Um, so we just go to our devices, however you attach your micro USB to your computer, you can find it, open up the config file, and at the bottom, um, so I've done a little bit, so I guess uh, Raspberry Pi added these last two lines in, but I added this line in. 
dt overlay equals dwc2. And that's what it says add to the bottom of your config file. So I did. And now you want to add a file called ssh with no extension. You want to add that in. Go here. You can see that there is no ssh. I don't know why. Either it hides it or it deletes it. But every time I reconnect the SD card, it uh, goes away. So I'm just going to go there. Um, uh, oh, I want to go to CD volume uh, backslash volumes, and we can see all of our disks. And I'll go to boot. That's my disk. See, do we have SSH in here? Yeah, I don't know where it goes, but I keep making it and it keeps going away. I'm going to do touch SSH. And now we can see there's a file here that says SSH and there's no extension. That enables the Raspberry Pi to allow you to communicate via uh, secure shell connection. Okay. Finally, open up CMD line to the command line.txt file. And we want to add in this little bit here after the word root weight. So we'll do that. Go to command line txt, and you can see here I did root weight, space, whatever it said on that website, and another space. So just copy and paste that into txt file. Okay. And it says that's it. Eject the SD card from your computer, putting the Raspberry Pi and connect it via USB to your computer. It'll take 90 seconds to boot, shorter than uh, subsequent boots, and it appears on as a USB Ethernet device. You can SSH it using Raspberry Pi local as address. Now this last step is probably easy. You know, it's easy to me now that I've done something like eight hours of research on this, but I was unimpressed by the lack of documentation out there to, I thought, thoroughly explain how to um, communicate via SSH. So this is what I figured out. So I'm going to eject my disk. And I'm going to simply plug it in to the Raspberry Pi right here. Um, <clears throat> let me just switch it over to the Raspberry Pi. All right. Plugging in USB cable. I'm going to go to Open Network Preferences and show you there is a this RNDIS slash Ethernet gadget. That's what the Raspberry Pi is going to show up as, and it's connected. So what I had to do is configure it manually. So by default, it's using DHCP. You have to go to manually here, and then for Max, you have to type the IP address 192.168.21 and the subnet mask 255.255.255.0. Uh, for Windows, it's very similar. I think this is a 7, and that's the only difference. I'm not even sure if it's necessary or not, but once you do that, you have to hit the back button, and I'll take you to System Preferences. You can go to Sharing, and click Internet Sharing, and make sure the RNDIS Ethernet gadget is clicked as well. Now we can, as it says, you can SSH it using Raspberry Pi local as the address. Um, how to do that it took me a while to figure out. I've never really communicated via SSH before. I had, but I didn't remember how to, so I wouldn't have just been able to get up and go with it. So what we do is SSH Pi 
at Raspberry Pi dot local and it asks for the uh, password it's just raspberry now we're in the root directory of the raspberry pi and let's just list see what we got we have desktop download media pictures python games some video file documents image file um, music public templates videos I added the media file, uh, the media folder, the image.jpg, and the video file as I was testing out the camera once I figured it out. So let's go into the media directory. So we have four images, so I was just taking some images. And if we want to take an image on this, we can, except for we need to first enable the camera. So if you tried to take an image using a command I'll show you in a second, it'll say um, something like, did you enable the camera? Try to use sudo rasp-config. So let's do that. Uh, we could go to enable camera. Would you like to the camera interface to be enabled? Yes. Cam camera interface is enabled. Okay. And now we can go finish, and it'll take us back here. So that concludes this first page, the first tutorial. Uh, very good, well-written tutorial. I really appreciate this guy's hard work. Um, you could, of course, find the address in the description on YouTube or simply get it from here. So on the Raspberry Pi website, we have the documentation for Raspbian. Applications, we could look up camera module. So there's Raspy Still for taking still images, Raspy Vid for taking video, and still uh, Raspy Still also does time lapse. So you could add a time lapse flag. Uh, I think it's dash time lapse, but there's a lot of documentation in here and it thoroughly explains it. Uh, Raspy Still YUV, I'm a little unsure of. I think it does raw images, but once again, this isn't what the tutorial is about. You can read this on your own time and come to understand it. I've gone through it and it's uh, it's a well-written documentation. A little easier to see is the Raspy Still specifically. We can see the basic usage of it is Raspy Still command dash O for output. And you're going to output it as some file name. So if we go back to the SSH and we're in the media folder, we can do raspy still dash o image 5.jpg. So I'm going to try to take a picture of myself using this camera, see what happens. Or, yeah, let's just, I'm going to just set it still. Actually, gonna, all right, let's go. Okay, that probably took. And how do we get it from here onto our normal computer so that we could actually use it for something? What we want to do is exit. And now we're in our normal terminal. Uh, so, there's other documentation. So, it's also in the Raspberry Pi documentation. There's remote access, SSH. SCP for secure copy, and that's for sending, um, it's a command for sending files over SSH. And we could copy files to our Raspberry Pi, we could copy files from the Raspberry Pi, we could copy multiple files, and that's it. So I'm going to show you how to copy files from the Raspberry Pi, and then I'll show you how to copy multiple files. So let's go back to terminal, and We'll just copy that file that we just did. So copying files from your Raspberry Pi, you want to do SSH, or sorry, SCP, Pi, I'll do Pi at Raspberry Pi, dot local, colon, image, uh, actually we were in the folder media slash image5.jpg, and then you can see 
there's another dot, which means that we're going to copy it to our current directory. It's going to ask for the password, which is Raspberry. You can see it downloaded. Let's list what's here. We have image, uh, image 2, image 3, image 4, and image 5. So let's open this <laughs> goofy, goofy image, probably. Making some sort of dumb face. Hey, look at me. And came out well. I was moving the camera a little. It's low light, so if that were sitting on a tripod or if it was still, then that would have even been a lot more clear. Now, I'm going to re let's see. Uh, let's go to a different directory. Where are we? Let's go to pictures. Okay, so there are no pictures that say image in here. So I'm going to copy all those images um, from the media folder. I think there's five images, so let's do that. We'll do SCP um, pi at raspberry pi dot local colon media slash and I'm going to say I asterisk. Now this means anything that starts with an I in this media folder we're going to download. So however you want to use this wildcard designator um, is up to you. And I'm going to do another dot, and that'll take it to the current directory. It's going to ask for the password, which is raspberry. Oh, shoot. Raspberry. Oh, I think I messed up the password. Nice. So you see it downloads all the files. And if I list again, you can see all the files are here. And uh, that's pretty much it. From here, you can... You can write some sort of script, like a .sh file or a Python script to maybe um, start taking a time lapse upon startup of the Raspberry Pi. I'm going to try to do that next. Or you can uh, start a video, start like, you know, record one minute of video every time the Raspberry Pi is turned on, something like that, whatever your heart desires. So. Hopefully getting started with this is a lot more clear now, at least on a Mac or in general. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, good luck.